Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the <laughs> AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. I uh, hope everybody is doing well. So usually I usually don't lead off with a specific stock or dwell on a company's earnings. But, you know, if anybody's been watching this for, for a while and kind of all you guys in the live webinar, you kind of know we trade Tesla all the time, right? We trade Tesla all the time. And, you know, what we've been saying, a couple of things we've been saying for a very, very long time. Um, there's a, a really huge contingent of pro... Tesla's kind of like Trump in a weird way. People really love Trump, really love Tesla, or really people really hate Trump and really hate Tesla. And for the, the stock side of it, right? And I've, I've been saying this for years, you know, people are missing out on, hands down, in my opinion, uh, the greatest two-way, not just up, although it seems to go straight up, uh, but the greatest two-way uh, trading vehicle, no pun intended, that I've seen in 20 plus years. Okay. And the most amazing part, when, like I've been saying this for years, if, if people just, again, just paid attention to the price action, you could do well. You could do well with the stock, uh, you know, not only long, as we're seeing now, but to the short side. Uh, and the second thing we kind of been you know, dwelling on for a long, long period of time now, and this is kind of real, you know, relatively new to me, which is amazing, but um, you know, watching order flow, you know, watching option order flow, uh, just kind of understanding where really big money is placing their bets. And again, they're not always right. Um, but you know what? They're not always wrong either. And, you know, we've been discussing, you know, for weeks now, you know, the amount of really ridiculous bets uh, being made on, on Tesla. You know, last week we talked about 2.7 million of the 625s and the 605s and then the 700s and then we started seeing today if you go on my regular twitter account um yeah let me show you if you go on my regular twitter account you'll see i i tweeted this out um, um i tweeted this out about you know half hour 40 minutes to the close the the amount of the amount of aggressive bets that was taken on uh tesla you know just into the close was just absolute, uh, absolute, uh, just ridiculous. Uh, this is just like, just this is right before I left. Uh, I mean, ridiculous. Seven hundreds, and, and we were laughing. I go, my God, they're 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 paying, they're paying nine hundreds. This is you know the stocks at five seventy five. They're paying nine hundreds for six months out. I mean, this is absolute insanity. And after the close, I mean, is there really, you know, is there really anything left uh, to talk about, right? Uh, for all those, uh, for all those people who were long these, you know, this stock, um, you know, congrats. I mean, what can you say? I mean, phenomenal, uh, phenomenal, phenomenal move, right? Absolutely phenomenal move. Um, you have, it's truly one of the most unique situations that we've probably seen in an incredibly long time. I think that's the best way of doing it. But, you know, this is kind of more of the message. Uh, you know, this is really kind of more of the message to uh, to the people on the other side of the trade. And, and again, it doesn't mean that you're bad people. Um, I, I just, I, I really do believe that, you know, people who try to, try to make themselves be the smartest person in the room, okay? Unfortunately, a lot of times, you're gonna find yourself broke, okay? And I mean, for the amount of people that were cheering Tesla 1000 and this, that, the other thing, you know, people were cheering Tesla 200, Tesla 100, Tesla 150, Tesla's a fraud, Elon's a fraud, they're cooking the books. If it was, and again, it, it really does prove how, that we're idiots. You know, I've been saying this for years. I'm an idiot, okay? I've, I've made peace with that. I'm a moron, right? I don't know anything, okay? I don't know anything about a Tesla. I know they, it's a beautiful car. I know everybody on my block owns one, right? I know it's an incredibly... Uh, you know, incredibly uh, strong-willed, uh, strong-willed um, bull and bear case to be with it, but I don't know what's going on. I couldn't tell you the difference between General Motors, um, Tesla, you know, and uh, and Microsoft, right? I couldn't, I couldn't tell you the difference. I, I don't know. I'm not that smart. So it really is amazing when people are trying their hardest to convince people 
how smart they are. They really miss the big picture. And when you miss the big picture is, unfortunately, not only are you going to lose money and the market will humble you because, again, the market will do that. I don't care how smart you think you are. Um, the price action is the price action. And no matter what happens in your life, the market will still be around. Okay, We're going to be dead 100 years from now, knock on wood, but the market will still be around. And unfortunately, a lot of new traders, okay, uh, they're so easily, so damn easily um, able to be convinced that one side of the market is right and the other, that they're not looking at the market from the re you know, realistic point of view that, hey, by the way, nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. We're not even promised it tomorrow. But they're so hell-bent about being right. You know, Tesla's going to go to 200. Tesla's going to go to 1,000. I want to be right. I want to be the guy who's going to be right. It's irrelevant, guys. No, nobody's keeping score. Nobody cares. Trust me. Joe Blow's opinion from Wichita, Kansas, that called Tesla at 500 uh, two years ago. Nobody cares. You know, nobody cares. Uh, it's all about price action. It's all about trying to take little bits, right? Little bits of the pie. We're not trying to eat the whole cow, man. Okay? I'm not trying to eat the whole cow. I'm just trying to take a little piece, right? A little piece for you, you know, for you, all you beyond lovers. This is not for you. But the cow, right? The cow. The cow is big. The market's big, right? You don't need to have everything in the market. You don't need to be a greedy pig. And the moral of the story is, again, for all you guys who do trade in the intraday ranks, it's so important just to kind of, you know, take, take a humble pill, right? Take a humble pill and just realize that at the end of the day, a lot of times that you are putting yourself in a position of failure is because you're trying to will the market or will the stock into your warped reality versus the reality that you are getting. So tonight, I mean, realistically, do you really need to talk negative about Tesla, right? Is there really anything left to say? Just relax, calm down, right? Look at the market from the actual point of view of reality, okay? And not fantasy world, okay? Nobody's going to give you a trophy for you being right or you being the smartest or you being the first. It's all about you versus the market. It's not about anybody else versus you, okay? You are your own worst enemy. You will be the, you know, you'll either be the goat or the champion of anything you do, any road you travel in life. But the most important thing is just be humble, right? Be humble. You don't have to be the nicest guy in the world. You don't have to be the perfect human being, but be humble, okay? Or the market, I promise you, and you see it already today and tonight, the market has humbled a lot of people. So uh, let's get into the tape. Uh, uh, surprisingly, there are other things to talk about um, and some pretty good action. Apple, uh, very, very good action today. Great quarter. Very, very nice move. All-time highs. Uh, after the close, again, if you notice the companies with the most money, they're doing very, very well, right? Microsoft, a very, very good quarter. Uh, Apple, very good quarter. Software names in general, uh, NOW uh, having a very, very strong move uh, after hours. Uh, and Facebook is not, right? Facebook is not. Uh, didn't look good, right? Didn't look good. Facebook is having a, a different uh, different point of view today. Allergan uh, as well. So this is kind of a mixed bag, but overall, again, how do you not like what you're seeing right now in the markets? It, it really is a very, very strong tape. Um, you could take advantage on both sides, although I try to stay with the trend. I, I don't like the cute shorts because cute shorts, there's always a, a sentiment of buy the dip attached with cute shorts and you'll always wind up having a harder trade. So I try to stay on the, you know, on the right side of sentiment, although there's obviously special occasion stocks coming down, a backside move, all that. But again, overall, when you look at the market today, uh, again, the market's just, just good. The markets is very, very good. And again, ever since we had that big move down a couple of days ago, uh, we reclaimed this supply, we reclaimed the 10 day, and today we reclaimed the five. So unless, again, something really, really comes out that's crazy, uh, the market should go higher. Again, think about also, also the broad strokes of what we were dealing with three days ago, four days ago, when this news broke, right, of the health scare. Did you hear about anything today? Just curious. Did you hear? I didn't, I didn't pay attention to anything that was, that was new materialistic information. And that's the whole point. That's kind of what we were talking about now for several days. The health scare is still there. But over time, over, you know, over a course of time, people start getting numb to it and it becomes less important because they believe 
that it will be contained just like everything else. Okay, and that's very, very important. And now two days in a row, the market has slowly but surely, again, we're aware, right? We're aware of the health scare. We're aware that it could, could be spreading little doses here and there. But the most important part is the market is starting to get comfortable uh, with this coronavirus. Again, obviously not a good thing, but the market at least is getting comfortable. And the moral of the story is we're starting to slowly but surely phase it out until there's new materialistic information. Uh, if you look at today, it was actually a pretty solid day today. Um, I, my, my day today was Apple and uh, Tesla. And it's amazing where the pivot was on Tesla compared to where it is now. I, I felt like this is this could have been a broadcast from like a week ago, but uh, some pretty, pretty good action today. Uh, let's talk about it. BYND, uh, and again, king of the PRs, right? King of the PRs. Um, Last night, Tim Hortons removed it from their menus. This morning, you got a, you got a headline that uh, BYND and uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, blah, 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 blah. And the stock all of a sudden goes up before it goes down. But it, again, obviously, never got above uh, the, 20, the 125 pivot. Uh, Netflix, again, something's wrong with this damn thing. It, it just, there's, no really, there's no really great, great continuation of, of channels in this thing. It's just up and down, up and down. Uh, never obviously got to the 350 level. Uh, here is my first trade. I actually traded Apple twice today. Uh, the first one through the pivot, you know, really, really nice move. I, I left probably about a dollar and change uh, on the table on that first move, but yeah, no complaints. So here is the first move on Apple. Uh, here was the first move on Apple here. We talked about this uh, 123.75 uh, right here, 123.75, 124 area. It actually correlated perfectly uh, with the daily chart. If you look at the daily chart, 323, uh, 323.30 was the 52-week high. So this is a really, really strong move. Uh, right from the word go, like right from the word go, ran right back to supply. And then we actually caught it on a bounce. The problem is I screwed up the bounce. I screwed up the bounce. Uh, I sold the first move on the bounce. I thought it was going to really explode, like really, really explode. Um, so I, I sold the second move on a bounce uh, and the rest I got broken even. And then it went down like 20 cents. And I kept on saying in the live webinar, I go, and I was talking to Ken. I go, Ken, I think we played it a little more. Right before it went, I said, I think we played it a little too conservative. I think we played a little conservative. And the next thing I know, the stock explodes uh, to the fifth, to the day's high. So I, I kind of screwed up the second trade on Apple, but uh, the first one was fine. I mean, more than fine. I was pretty happy about that. Uh, Boeing never, you know, Boeing never got up to the 328.75, 329.11. Not that I, not that I remember. I don't think it did. No, it never did. Never got up there. Uh, Nvidia was pretty good. Nvidia was pretty good here. Uh, Two forty-eight uh, rejection of the sixty-minute twice. I said just in case the semiconductors get a little bit better, uh, it needs to build for a trade. Here is Nvidia. Uh, here is Nvidia. This two forty-eight channel was right here. Two forty-eight went right to uh, two forty-nine. Again, I, I knew it wasn't going to be a big move because you had the supply zone here. But again, nice little move there on Nvidia. Uh, IIPR, we talked about this last night on the video, uh, IIPR, we talked about this, uh, 9275, 9275, 93 build, uh, went as high as almost 95, I think there's one more day, maybe there's a shot to stretch out to 97 tomorrow, uh, DESP, I, st I still like DESP for tomorrow, and it, it didn't, con it didn't confirm, obviously, uh, if you look at DESP's chart, it actually, you know, rested today perfectly. It actually rested. So if it could reclaim tomorrow, uh, I think the stock can be good. Uh, shop was a nice move, really, really nice move on shop. Uh, we talked about right here, we talked about that 473 level, right? 473, was that 473? Uh, yeah, 473 needs to build. So here was the 473. It went to uh, almost 480. On the single candle, uh, shop was good, and again, here's you know here's huge, right? Big move there. Uh, shop, uh, I said shop the first you know first move uh, to 77, 78 went to 78, went to 80. Uh, Boeing never got there, and and here's where you know this was a really good trade, right? For a really good trade, again, not to where it is now, but this was a really good trade. So we were waiting for this thing, and again, I said cash flow only because, well, again, they were reporting after the close, you, you, and the last thing you want to do uh, is get caught in a rug pull. So uh, 573, 574, if it builds, if, if builds can spike. I said there's a shot against the 77, right? And obviously, I, I, you know, I was joking around here, take sales, best stock ever. So I thought the stock was going to get the 77, okay? So that's where... That's where I was talking about. I don't even know if you can even see it from here. 
Yeah, so here is the pivot right here, right? So here is the pivot right here. Uh, right here, 573.60. So I, I knew it, need to, it needed to reclaim 74. And I knew it, it, it could, you know, I thought it was going to get stopped right around here, around 77. So it went there. You know, very, very quick trade. I know a lot of you guys did really well. Like $3 move very, very quickly. And, and then I, you know, I went to get a drink of water. I went to get a drink of water and I look up, it's like 80 and then 82 and then an 85. And then and I'm like, what the hell is going on? So, and then you started seeing more and more of these aggressive buyers come in and just after hours, just, just, just ridiculous, absolute ridiculous uh, move in the trade. So uh, it was actually a pretty decent day without this, this craziness. But if you are along this thing, God bless you, did a great, great job. And uh, again, you're blessed. What can you do? So let me give you guys some ideas uh, for tomorrow. Uh, for tomorrow's session uh, that again has nothing to do with beta. Yeah, I, I still like this DESP. I do. Uh, I think it rested today. Okay, I think it rested today. Uh, pretty nice move here. Um, I think tomorrow, if this thing can just reclaim this uh, 1485, 15, I think it could go. Um, I like this SDC. I traded it last week. Uh, you know, again, if you can imagine this little trend line, if this thing could start building 14 and a quarter, uh, 14 and start confirming 14 and a quarter it might wake up and go all the way to the $15 area and I kind of like this RVNC tomorrow uh, look at this RVNC had a big big move rested now it's looking to push again if it starts building you know 2350 or so maybe you can get next leg up uh, Apple I'm looking for any dips any dips on at all on Apple uh, it's getting a little bit of a dip here uh, after hours, but I want a little bit more. So please, guys, for all you guys who do trade beta, uh, please come to Morning Strategy uh, early tomorrow. We'll discuss Apple. Uh, we'll discuss Tesla. We'll discuss Beyond. Uh, Beyond, I like at some point tomorrow. Not to the upside, maybe to the downside. Uh, Netflix, kind of freaky as well. So please get to Morning Strategy early. For the rest of you guys, God bless, and we'll see you on the other side. Take care. Congratulations guys. for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today. Thank you.